Part 2 of 3, The Law Goes Out from Zion. Ezekiel 36, 25-27 I will cleanse you with pure water, and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all of your impurities and from all of your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh so that you may feel again. I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and to be careful to keep my ways. You will live in the land I gave to your ancestors. You will be my people and I will be your God. Amen. Listen to those words from our God. Listen so that you may be fruitful. For the words to the holy nation of God, his holy nation, begins with these words. Repent, for the kingdom is at hand. This message being given to you from a messenger of God, he is also a disciple of Messiah. He is not of importance in this matter to you, as he doesn't speak in his own name, he speaks in the name of the only true Messiah, so that you may know that the Holy Spirit is living and true today. The word of God is living, as these words being spoken from Mount Zion. Let us begin with this chapter of Isaiah 52. Awake, awake Zion, clothe yourselves with splendor. Put on your robes of majesty to Jerusalem, to the holy city of God. The unclean will not enter you again. Shake the dust off and rise up. Sit enthroned, O Jerusalem. Free yourselves from the chains around your necks, O daughters Zion. Captive ones, for this is what the Lord says, You were sold for nothing, and without money you will be redeemed. For this is what the Sovereign Lord says to you, At first my people went down to Egypt to live, and were enslaved, and then Assyria oppressed them, and then exiled to Babylon only to be freed and brought back to their land and then scattered all throughout the world only to be brought back for such a time as this in history. And now, what do I have here? declares the Lord. For my people have been taken away for nothing, and those who ruled them mocked them, and all day long my name was constantly blasphemed, and still to this day. Therefore, now my holy nation is being reestablished. No more will my name be blasphemed or mocked. My people will know my name, for they will know that it is I who foretold it. Yes, the Lord of hosts speaks these words to you. How beautiful on the mountaintops are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim true peace in spirit, who bring good tidings in joy, who proclaim salvation, those that say that God over Zion reigns forevermore. Listen. Your watchmen lift up their voices, together they shout for joy. When the Lord returns to Zion, you will see it with your own eyes. Burst into songs of joy, all together, you ruins of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people, he has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord will lay bare his holy arm in the sight of all the nations, and to all the ends of the earth. They will all see the salvation of God when it is done. Depart from there, and go from there, touching no unclean thing. Come out from it and be pure, you who carry the words of the Lord. But you will not leave in haste or go in flight, for the Lord will go before you. See my servant, your Messiah, acted wisely. He will be raised up and lifted up highly exalted, just as there were many who were appalled at him with his appearance, as he was so disfigured beyond of any human being, and his form marred beyond any human likeness. So he will sprinkle many nations, and kings will shut their mouths because of him. For what they were not told, they will see, and what they have not heard, they will understand. Now you will see, after reading that chapter of Isaiah 52 with clarity, that this is all coming to pass as we read these words, the Lord has established and written it all. The Lord of hosts is God alone. The messenger of these words does not come in his own name, but comes to represent the words of Messiah, just as Messiah doesn't come in his own name, but is speaking for God as was prophesied in Deuteronomy 18.18. 18. The name of God is holy and should never be profaned, though you must know it. His true name can only be pronounced correctly as a whisper with a breath out, because it has no vowel letters in it. It has the letters Y-H-V-H, yod heh vav -he. 
Four letters that can only be pronounced properly in a whisper keeping it holy. As it was always intended to be. Though when talking to others about him, or at great assemblies, or any other public settings, call him this. Read what the Lord said here in Exodus 3.15. The Lord your God says, I shall be known as the Lord of hosts, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Israel. This is my name forevermore, the name you shall call me from generation to generation. Now let's hear his holy ways so that we may write them on our hearts and on our minds, that we may serve our God and become his holy nation. These holy instructions are now given to you that you must listen to with your full heart to be sure that you obey because you fear the Lord and because you love the Lord and most of all, because you trust in the Lord. Now wanting to do his will for your life, trusting he knows best instead of being like Adam and Eve, wanting to determine evil and good for yourselves, as this will always lead to destruction. Instead, trust the ways of God and obey His ways to find true life in all its abundance. All of these laws mentioned are written in the Old Testament from Moses, yet clarified through Messiah within the power of the Holy Spirit. The first law to always hold in your heart and to keep in your mind above all is the most important as Messiah said, love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul and with all of your mind. Love him above all, more than anything or anyone. Put him first and his will above your own. When you truly know the Lord God and His ways of justice and light, it will cause you to truly love Him back for His goodness, mercy, and love. This is why it's the first most important command. That is how you will be able to obey, is by knowing His love, causing you to love Him back truly, wanting to live in His ways forevermore. And the second command is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Your neighbor is anyone that's around you, wherever you are. Love them in the same way that God has loved you, so that you will also love strangers from foreign lands and less fortunate. Love everyone equally and truly with full compassion. You shall have no other God except the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God of Israel is your only God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Do not make any sculptured images or likeness of what is in the heavens above, or the earth below, or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them on your knees at all, or serve them in any way. Idolatry is strictly forbidden. This includes the worship of any man born of woman. Do not worship them. Worship only the Lord your God and serve only Him as Messiah taught us. Idolatry is an abomination to the Lord. So take down all of your idols in the land and never build them again. The Lord your God has spoken. Do not swear falsely by the name of the Lord your God, but also it's best to not swear at all. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. The seventh day you must rest and do not let anyone work for you on this holy Sabbath day either. No fire on the Sabbath. You are to rest and keep it holy. Sabbath was made for you to rest, not you for Sabbath, but Sabbath for you to rest. It is necessary, for you're not only made to work. Though it is okay to help others on the Sabbath as long as they aren't blatantly ignoring Sabbath day. For example, in the same way you would pull your child out of a ditch that fell into it on the Sabbath, you would work to pull them out and would not leave them down there until the next day. Therefore, in the same way it is lawful to help others on the Sabbath if someone needs it, we are to always love, and love is helping others, not for money, but because of love. Love is always obeying the law, even on Sabbath. Honor and respect your mom and your dad, always. You shall not murder. This also means hating someone in your heart. Love everyone, including your enemies, for God is the one that repays. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. So trust his judgments. It is your duty only to love. Distance from an enemy is sometimes necessary. However, still love them and pray for them, as hate in your heart only hurts yourself and is still considered murder. So love and forgive. 
so that you may abide in peace as they don't understand just as you have it. We're all only people and also so that you may be forgiven from God as well. He only forgives you if you forgive others. You shall not commit adultery. This means even looking upon another that you're not married to with sexual desire is still considered committing adultery in your heart. Practice innocence with a pure heart. Remember God knows your heart and desires a true, honest heart. You shall not steal, not even from an enemy, never. You shall not bear false witness against anyone by saying that they did something that they didn't do. Remember a false witness will not go unpunished. Your punishment will come if you do this. You shall not covet your neighbor's house or wife or anything else that belongs to them. Dietary laws are for your own health, not for condemnation in the new covenant, but for your own health and for reasons of creation. Remember God created everything, so therefore He knows what's best to eat and what's not. Simply trust in Him, and that is why we choose to obey these commands. Do not eat a carcass that has been eaten by other animals, or that you have already found dead, or is still living. Do not eat swine. This is any type of pork products. It's more harmful than you know. Also, don't eat camel, rabbit, or hyrax. Do not eat seafood that does not have scales and or fins. Do not eat these types of birds, an eagle, vulture, the kite, falcons of every variety, and all varieties of raven, the ostrich, the nighthawk, the seagull, hawks of every variety, owl, the cormorant, pelican, the bustard, the stork, herons, of every variety, the hoopoe, and the bat. The Lord your God knows the reasons before scientists ever will. So therefore, trust in the Lord your God. All winged, swarming things that walk on all fours shall be an abomination to eat because they were not created for mankind to eat. They were created for other reasons. But you may eat locusts of every variety, crickets, grasshoppers as well, but nothing else that has wings and four legs. Do not eat any four-legged animal with paws like cats or dogs or these types of animals. Do not eat the mole, the mouse, the great lizards of every variety, the gecko, the land crocodile, the lizard, the sand lizard, and the chameleon. Do not eat food that fell on dirty ground. Give it to nature instead so that animals may eat of it. Do not eat snake or other animals that the body is rubbing against the ground. It is unclean to eat. Do not cook or eat food that has been cooked in a clay pot with water or any other liquid inside of it. Do not carry on false rumors or slander others. Do not join hands with the guilty being a false witness for them. Do not favor the mighty person or rich person, but treat all people equally with equality, rich or poor, strong or weak, all treated equal with love. Do not hold back from the needy during disputes, but give them their rights and their belongings. Do not eat meat with blood still visible in it, for all of life is accounted for and life is in the blood. Obey this command, says the Lord your God. Read Genesis 9, 4 through 5. Do not take bribes of injustice. Hear this. You either serve God in justice or you serve money and are corrupt. You can't serve both God and money. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. Gather the pieces of food that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. If you don't want leftovers, either allow the less fortunate to eat it or anyone else that is hungry, or leave it in nature for wild animals, or it can be saved for later. But let nothing be wasted unless it is unhealthy to eat. Don't even mention the names of false gods. It shall not be heard from your lips. Do not follow the practices or worship of any other gods or religious practices, but instead tear it away from your life. God is holy, so we must practice being holy to be a part of His kingdom. Cleanliness will never change, so therefore we must be clean to be holy in the presence of our holy God, as we are His holy nation. So this is why these words are set in place for you to obey and to live clean. Women are considered unclean for seven days after birthing a boy and 60 days of purification if birthed a girl. 
Also, a woman is considered unclean during her monthly period, meaning no mating at all during this time. On the eighth day, a boy shall be circumcised. Not only is this a lasting covenant with the houses of Israel, there is also hygienic reasons as well as spiritual meaning within it. Do you not cut the umbilical cord that is attached so that the child may be free to roam the earth? In the same way, remember to circumcise your heart, spiritually, when at age of accountability. Parents, teach your children what this means, as this is an everlasting covenant for all time. You can read this in Deuteronomy 10, 16. A man is considered unclean if he has any discharge, so keep from mating during this time of healing for that. When a man releases semen, he must wash his body in water and wash clothes or anything it touches. A woman should not be seen naked while on her monthly period. This is for temptation reasoning as well as for proper clean living. Do not let your animals mate with other types of animals. Do not have sexual relationships with animals or family members of any kind. Do not have sexual relationships with your son or your daughter-in-law either, still considered family. Also, a man cannot have sexual relationships with a mother and her daughter as that would be depravity. If you plant a tree, you should not eat of its fruit until five years. This fourth year, set all the fruit out before the Lord in triumph. Then the fifth year, you may eat of its fruit. Your faith and obedience in this command will make a lasting success in due season for that tree. Do not practice looking to the future with psychic readings of any sort or zodiac signs or mystic interpretation of any kind, as this is all considered witchcraft and so therefore is an abomination to the Lord your God. These next laws are for tradition of the pagan practices. Do not ever do these practices for the dead. Don't participate in the Day of the Dead or Halloween. Do not make any cuttings, nor imprint any marks upon your bodies for the dead or of offense. Do not round off the side growth of your hair on your head for the dead or the pagan practice tradition to destroy the side growth of your beard by ripping it out, as this tradition is not for the people of God. Do not seek the dead spirits either, as God will turn his face from you if you do this practice. Let them sleep in peace. Teach your daughters not to be a whore, and instead to be modest and clean, saving their virginity until marriage. Teach them to respect themselves, and that the man that takes their virginity should marry them. Stand up before the elderly does, and help them. Be humble and respectful to the elderly. You shall not falsely measure of length, weight, or capacity, as you must be honest with all of your money and agreements. Sanctify by cleaning yourself often and be holy. This is done in water and the word of God. Be holy to a divorced woman. Do not marry her, unless her husband has passed away from life unto death or was unfaithful to her out of wedlock. Keep the holy festivals of the Lord forever to be remembered, for all generations to keep, says the Lord God of Israel. This includes Passover, being the Feast of Unleavened Bread, Feast of Trumpets, Yom Kippur, and for the Israeli natives, Feast of Tabernacles and those that want to join them, as well as the Year of Jubilee. Short blasts on a ram's horn when you see an attack coming to the land and God will help deliver you. Trust in Him and lean not on your own power, for He protects His holy nation and already knows those enemies that are coming. They will not harm you. Trust in the Lord and do not fear. Reflect and think about the fact that you follow the ways of God because you trust in Him and His ways rather than because you have to. For a willing heart that rejoices to live in His ways will delight in salvation. This is what He seeks within His holy nation. You will have His laws written on your heart and on your mind spiritually now that your heart cares to practice His ways. And because you love His ways of justice and cleanliness, after being cleansed in water and renewed in spirit, being reborn, you will no longer forget to follow in the ways of God. Since the heavy burdens from the traditions of men are now cleaned out and no longer remembered, neither the Ark of the Covenant any longer remembered, as was prophesied in Jeremiah 3, 16-18. In those days, when your numbers have increased greatly in the land, no longer will his people mention the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. It will not enter their minds, nor be remembered. It will not be missed, nor will another be made. 
At that time, they will call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord, and all nations will be gathered to Jerusalem to honor the name of the Lord. No longer will they follow the stubbornness of their evil hearts. Now in these days the people of Judah will join the people of Israel, and together they will unite in the land that I have given to your ancestors as an inheritance. What you look like or what you wear is not the way they know you have the laws of God in your heart, but now with your love they will know. Therefore, if you wear something just for people to see, then you're doing it for them instead of for God, and in that you have your reward in full from them instead of from God. Remember that love covers over a multitude of sins, and in love they will know you have the truth within you. The joy in your eyes tell more to them than what you wear or how your hair looks. This is the truth of how it's always supposed to have been, beyond man's misinterpretations and disobedient hearts and stiff necks throughout the past generations of old. But now this is the new Jerusalem, his holy nation that he loves dearly. If anyone makes a vow to do something for the Lord, they must do it. Do not test the Lord your God. Instead, trust with your full faith instead. Do what is right in the eyes of God, so that you may inherit the land, and He will drive out all of your enemies. When your children or when others ask what laws or why we follow God's laws, then tell them it's because we trust that God knows best. It's because of His great love that draws us in to have us want to follow His ways. He is the Creator, so He knows best. We are His holy nation, all throughout the world being true disciples in salvation of truth and in light, and we trust in Him, His ways. They aren't laws, they're ways to live in, given to us as a gift from the Creator of the universe to live healthy, happy, clean, safe, honest lives. Hallelujah! Do not let your children marry someone that serves other false gods, or they will turn your child away from the only true God, and his anger will be on you. Your children should respect you when you say no, otherwise it is on them. Don't ever fear other nations set against you. You need only to remember what God did in Egypt all of those years ago. He will do again for you if you stand firm in faith and do not fear. You are His holy nation. Know that all wealth comes from God alone and not from your own hands, or else pride will set in. Do not have pride, but be humble as children. Do not worship God at another altar for a false god. Only on a site that the Lord your God will choose amidst to establish His name, that place only you will worship Him in spirit and in truth. If you see someone on the side of the road or anywhere else that needs help, do not ignore it. You must help if it's obvious that they need help, or ask if you aren't sure. A man should never put on female clothes, and a female should never put on male clothes. This is an abomination to the Lord your God. A man shall never lay with another man as a woman, for this is an abomination to the Lord your God, or two women without a husband. As woman was created for a man, to not be alone, and to be fruitful and multiply. It's not about our ways, it's about the ways of God, and He sees man and woman as both precious, and He has purpose for both of them beyond reproduction. You live out your appointed work because you truly believe, and because you are already living in salvation. You must not accumulate very large amounts of silver or gold, and living beyond your means with greed. Some for emergency savings, yes, or for a backup and things like that, but not for selfishness and greed. Give to the poor and the charity, or for things for the Lord. Instead, not only for money, but also everything and everyone else, do not allow yourself to have more of what distracts you from God either. Keep Him first in your life. If you see a bird's nest anywhere in a tree or on the ground somewhere, and the mother bird is there, let her go, and only take the nest and eggs, but let the mother bird go, or leave it all alone. But do not take the mother bird. This is for reasonings that you don't even need to know. Just trust that the Lord knows why. Also, other ways that you don't understand, just trust in God. He knows why. If you build a house, make sure the roof has safety built so that no one can fall from it. Do not plant two different seeds at the same time. If a man takes a woman's virginity, then he should marry her. No man shall marry his dad's former wife or his own family members. 
command that your entire camp be holy, since God protects you and all of your camp. If they are still not holy, it will be on them since you at least announced it. No man or woman shall ever be a prostitute, for this is an abomination to the Lord. If a man gets married, he cannot go to war or in the army for one year after being married. If someone owes you something, you cannot go into their house and take it. Ask outside only unless invited in. You shall not abuse a needy laborer. Instead, pay them the same day before the sun goes down and pay them equal scales or better. You shall not take the rights from the fatherless or the widow to pawn their belongings. Treat them good. Instead, give them your change or food or water or other necessities. Give to the needy and have compassion on them and help them out in any way you can. Give all of your first fruits to God. Giving to the less fortunate or the hungry is giving to God. Do not make the house of God a house of merchandise. Sell your goods only off the property. It is not built for your own financial gain. Keep his house holy. Be renewed in water and in spirit and mind through true faith, practicing righteousness because you are saved in the new covenant. Live in truth and not in lies, serving God in spirit and in truth. Give mercy to others if you want mercy in return from God and from others. Also forgiveness to everyone that asks if you want forgiveness from God and from others in return. Otherwise, you will not be forgiven from God if you don't forgive and have mercy for others. Do not walk in darkness of sin or hidden sin. Instead, walk upright with integrity. Wash the feet of one another and serve others by helping them as this represents true humility and love. Do not let your heart be troubled or afraid. Instead, be courageous in true faith, putting your full trust in the Lord your God. Speak scripture truth to those that will hear. Hunger and thirst for righteousness and you will be rewarded by God. When you are fasting, do not make it look like you're fasting. Do it without others knowing, privately. That type of fasting is to focus spiritually rather than physical needs. But also, the other type of fasting that is even more highly rewarded is when not making the day about your own needs and wants, but instead for others' needs, shining the light of love with charity in the community. This type of fasting he loves truly and rewards highly, and your light will shine like the dawn of a new day if you do. You can read this in Isaiah 58. Have a pure heart of intentions and innocence. Be a peacemaker always. Stand for righteousness, even if you are persecuted for it. The kingdom of heaven belongs to those that will obey this command. When giving to others or helping others, say it is from the God of Israel, and you are only obeying Him so that He may get all the glory as they praise Him for it knowing that the only true God of the universe helped them and provides help in the time of need, as He is the true provider. If you make it known that it is not from you but from God, then you will be rewarded from God if you do this, otherwise your glory from them publicly thanking you will be your reward. Do not be angry at your brother, but instead pray for them, and also forgive them if they ask for forgiveness, and ask to be forgiven if you wrong them in any way, with humility and honor. If someone hits you, don't fight back. Remember, forgiveness is greater than vengeance, and compassion is greater than anger. Also, ask for forgiveness and mean it truly if they say you offended them within their point of view. Instead of fighting back, humble yourself, asking for forgiveness instead of fighting back, as fighting only stops when one does not fight back. Otherwise, there is always revenge that they will seek, and fights never solve anything or are ever ended. Those that hit another in anger will be held accountable. So this is why you must have mercy and have compassion and not fight back. For you are both only men, or women, and not gods. So by comparing of who is more strong is just pride and hatred. Remember love covers over a multitude of sins, so instead of fighting, pray for your enemies. Do not say no to someone that needs to borrow from you, though there are many that can abuse this. So if that's the case, then enabling isn't good either. If you know there are other options, then give them your advice, prayers, encouragement, and love instead. Say hello to everyone, not just the people you know. Being the holy nation of God, we are known by our love. 
Strive for perfection by practicing righteousness as practice makes perfect. Don't only do your righteousness acts in front of people, but also in private with integrity. Because your reward from God is when it is done in private, or also done publicly for His glory instead of your own. He knows your heart's intentions. Doing good for others is always great, but your reward will come either by praise from others towards you, or your reward will come from God for the glory you made for Him with your helping hand. Pray in public and privately with integrity. God knows if you truly pray to Him or if it's just for show. Don't only pray at dinner or on Sabbath in front of others or with your family, but also all throughout the days, every day and night. God loves to hear from you, and you are heard. Also pray from all within you instead of memorized repetition prayers of tradition. True prayers are from your own words to God. These are the prayers the Lord seeks from you. Do not seek to earn treasures on earth for things that are temporary, but instead earn your treasures in heaven that is eternal and will never be stolen or broken or lost. This treasure is earned by showing love to everyone and giving to the needy, bringing glory to God. Do not be anxious for anything, but instead trust in the Lord with all of your heart, trusting fully in His timing to know that He is taking care of everything as He has promised you. Amen. Seek first the kingdom and of its righteousness, and all else will be given to you. Do not give what is holy to those that will trample it. Example is don't preach to mockers. Do unto others as you would have done unto you. When you pray for something, truly believe that God hears you and that He will answer your prayers. Have it as you believed it would be. Be wise of all of your surroundings and of all situations, and through it all be peaceful as doves. Speak from the Holy Spirit of God instead from yourselves when in court, or on the Sabbath, or when speaking to crowds of things of God. Pray for the Holy Spirit of God to speak through you in these instances. And if you do, then your words will flow like a river of living water. Do not fear anyone that can only kill the body. Instead, only fear God that can kill the body and the soul in hell. Those that murder the innocent will have what's coming to them. As it is written, do not murder. You will be in paradise, so do not fear them. Instead, trust that God will have no weapon prosper against you safe in His love for those that trust in Him. Do not blaspheme the Holy Spirit of God. This is the only unforgivable sin. Do not speak idle words. Your words should always have meaning and truth. This means don't even speak coarse joking, dirty jokes, or speech like it. Your words should be pure and full of justice and love and encouragement. Practice is very important in your words. Do not cause another person to stumble in temptation of sin or peer pressure. Use your talents for the Lord and for the kingdom of God. Believe that all things are possible with God. Do not exalt yourself or you will be humbled. Endure until the end. Watch and pray that you do not enter into temptation. Put away your weapons and get rid of them. For those that live by their weapons will die from it. We don't need weapons, for we are to love even our enemies. God is the only weapon we need and is more than enough to defeat entire armies. Trust in God that as it has been written, no weapon can prosper against you. 1 Samuel 17, 47 All those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or by spear or weapons that the Lord saves, for the battle belongs to the Lord, and you will see a victory by trusting in Him alone instead of your weapons. Blessed is the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are the humbled, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are they that cry, for they will be comforted. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of the Most High. Blessed are they that are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt becomes tasteless, then how would it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but only to be trampled on upon by men. Therefore, do not lose your saltiness. Stay in the truth of the ways of God, and your saltiness will never vanish, but forever you will bring taste to the earth. 
Whoever is angry with his brother shall be liable to the judgment, and whoever says to his brother, You fool, will be liable to be cast into hell fire. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and you remember that your brother has anything against you, leave there your gift before the altar and go first to be reconciled with your brother and then come and offer your gift. Make amends with your opponent at law quickly while you are with them or else perhaps that opponent at law will deliver you to the judge and the judge to the officer and you will be cast into prison. Then you might not come out until you have paid every last shekel. If something or someone causes you to stumble or tempts you in any way, then cut them out of your life. It has been said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But it is now said to you that whoever divorces his wife, unless on an account of adultery, causes her to commit adultery, and whoever would marry her later, that woman that was divorced commits adultery also. To them that will go to court against you and takes your coat, give up your robe also. Whoever will ask you to go a mile, go with them too. Isaiah 63, 16 But you, O Father, though Abraham does not know us or Israel acknowledge us, you, Lord, are now our Heavenly Father. Our Redeemer from of old is your name. Therefore, call no man Father, but only your Heavenly Father, God only. The lamp of the body is the eyes. If your eyes are pure, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are evil, then your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light that is in you is darkness, how much greater that darkness. Therefore, have your eyes look at what is good, and if evil, then turn away from it. Judge not, so that you will not be judged. For with the judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with what you measure, it will be measured back to you. And why behold the splinter in your brother's eye, but not consider the log that's in your own eye? Or, how would you say to your brother, Let me pull the splinter out of your eye, and behold, the log is in your own eye? Hypocrite! First pull the log out of your own eye, and then you would see clearly to pull the splinter out of your brother's eye as well. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For whoever asks, receives. And whoever seeks, finds. And whoever knocks, the door will be opened to you. When someone asks for bread, would you give them a stone? Hear this, if then you being of the world know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father God who is in heaven give good gifts to those who ask of him? Have faith in the love of your heavenly Father. A good tree produces good fruit, but the corrupt tree produces evil fruit. A good tree cannot produce evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree produce good fruit. Every tree that does not produce good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits you will know them. Everyone that hears these words and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on a rock. And the rain descended and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. And everyone that hears these words and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell, and it was a great fall. The harvest indeed is great, but the laborers are few. Pray therefore that the Lord of the harvest, he sends forth laborers into the harvest. This is in regards to the kingdom of God. Do not transgress the commandments of God for your own traditions. It is now said to you, unless you change and live in the Spirit and become as little children with innocence and humility, then you would in no way enter the kingdom of heaven without doing so first. Whoever humbles themselves as a little child, he will be among the greatest in the kingdom of God. If your brother sins, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he hears you, then you have gained your brother. But if he does not hear, take with you one or two others, that by the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. But if he refuses to hear them, tell it to the whole congregation. And if he still refuses to hear the congregation also, let him be to you as a heathen. If two or three of you on earth agree in prayer concerning anything, whatever is asked, it will be done for you. The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All things, therefore, whatever they do, you observe, though do not according to their works of traditions. For they say and do not do, and they bind heavy burdens and lay them on the shoulders of people. But they themselves will not move them with one of their own fingers. 
and all of their works they do to be seen by men, for they make broad their phylacteries and enlarge their fringes upon their clothes, love the first reclining places at dinners and the first seats in the synagogues, and to be called rabbi. And this is why God said He will write His laws on our hearts because it's our true intentions that He seeks, our hearts that He longs for. If we do His will with all of our heart, then that is when we are truly pleasing God. That is when we become a bright light for the world to see. And this is why it is now said to you, Do not be called rabbi, or call anyone rabbi, for there is only one who is your teacher. That is the Messiah. Neither be called leaders, for only one is your leader. That is the anointed Messiah. The greatest of you will be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humble, and whoever will humble himself will be exalted. If you follow all of these commands perfectly and still wish to be perfect, then go sell all of your belongings and give it all to the poor, and then follow Messiah, and you will have much treasure in heaven if you do this. O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you whom through the generations have rejected those sent to you, this is the time for change. God has so desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks from under her wings, and you have refused time and time again. This is why currently this land is two different nations, Palestine and Israel, and rubble and hate for each other is constantly reminding you of this, and with no king and no altar to sacrifice in the temple for all this time. Behold, your walls have been left deserted, and this is why you have prayed at the western wall all of this time. Listen to this truth so that you may know that it's truth by listening. For it is now said to you, this prophecy of Ezekiel 37, 22, making it no longer two nations, but instead one nation to shine for the world to see in all of its splendor, will not happen, and you will also not see the Messiah either with your own eyes, until you all together cheer and rejoice with all of your hearts, saying these words from Psalms 118, 26. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord we bless you. When this happens and the people of God unite together into one flock, with only one leader being the only true Messiah sent from God, truly Israel will be redeemed forevermore. forevermore.